Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll be taking a look at how you can create gorgeously styled buttons for your site using the button widgets from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. We're on the page where you can see some examples of how this widget can be used and its possible stylization options. There are a lot of different designs you can create with this widget. You can make buttons of different colors, sizes, with outlines and without. There are a lot of easy to use options that will help you with this. Some of them include options for picking different fonts, styles, color variations and more. You can also combine this widget with other elements from the key add-ons collection to create whatever design you like. So let's take a look at how to work with this widget. Head over to the back end and in the element or sidebar search for a button. The one you'll want to use is this one in our signature color. So just drag it over to the page. And this is how the button widget looks by default. Not bad, but we're here to see all the things we can do with it. For starters, we can change the layout. Our button can be filled, outlined, or textual. I'll be making three examples of a button, each showcasing a different type. We'll start with filled. Our next option is for picking the button type. It can be standard, which is our default, with inner border, that looks like this, and icon boxed which looks a lot like the standard type until you pick an icon for it. I'll be using this one. Then we can enable a button text underline. If you switch it to yes, it looks like this. I'll set it to no for this button, but we'll be seeing it later on in another example. Next, we can pick the button size. The default is normal, and other than that, there's small, large, and normal full width. Okay. I'll stick with normal for my button. Then this is where we can change the button text. I'll replace mine so it says view more. OK. And right underneath is where you'd add the button link. I'll just set a hashtag as a placeholder. But you should take care to add the proper URL. Then the next set of options is for the button icon. Icons can be added from the icon library, which contains several different icon packs that you can choose from. But if you'd prefer a custom solution, you can upload an SVG, which is what I'll do. I'll use an icon that's already in my media library, and insert media. When you pick an icon, you can also choose its position. It's set to right by default, but you can move it to the left. I'll stick with right. And then we can enable an icon side border. When we switch it to yes, it looks like this. The last section in the content tab is for the developer tools. When we open them, we can see there's just one option here. And we can switch its setting to yes and get it to display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode. Then we can easily copy it for use elsewhere on our site. OK, we can now move on to the Style tab and see what we have in there. The first option is for the typography. So this is for the button text. In my case, view more. With the settings here, we can pick things like the font family we want to use. You can look through this list or search for the font if you know its name. Then you can pick the font size you want to use. It can be in pixels, ams, rams, or the viewport width. And using the weight option, you can pick any of these values to set your font weight. With the text transform option, you can make the button text uppercase, lowercase, capitalized, or normal, which is the default. And using style, we can make the text normal, which is the same as default, italic, or oblique. Following that, the decoration option lets us add an underline, overline, or a line through our text. Finally, we have the line height and letter spacing in case you need them. And that's it for the typography options. Then we have these switches, normal and hover. Normal contains the options for setting the button style when it's displayed normally. Basically, anytime when it's not being hovered over. So among these, we have the text color. You can change it using the slider or by adding a hex code, which is what I'll do. And there. After that, we can change the background color. The color picker is the same as before. So I'll set a hex code again and make my button background a soft peachy color. There. And we can set a border color. For the border to be visible, it needs to have some width. Two pixels would do just to show you. And then you can see which color you like. Also, if you want to set different border widths for different sides of the button, you can do that. Simply click here to delink the fields. And now you can set different values for each side without affecting the others. 
However, I'll bring this down to zero for all sides as I don't want to use a border for my button. Okay. Now let's take a look at what we have among the hover options. There is text hover color, so you can make your text a different color when it's hovered over. Like so. And the text color and icon color are changed simultaneously. You can make your icon a different color using the icon style settings, but more on that later. Then we have a background hover color, so you can make the button background change when you slide over it. However, an option that we didn't have with the normal settings is the reveal background. If you want to use it, you'll need to have a different background hover color to your normal background color. And then you can pick the setting you like, and then the hover color will be revealed by moving horizontally or by moving vertically. I don't plan on using this for my button, so I'll put it back to none. And I'll clear the background hover color. And the option I skipped in all of this is the border hover color. I'm not using a border, but if you opted for it, this is where you can change its color on hover. Now, getting back to the rest of our options. The next one we have is the border radius. It serves to round out the edges of your button. So, the corners here aren't sharp. And the button already has a small radius by default. To increase it, simply increase the values here. Alternatively, set zero to have a properly rectangular button. I'll keep this for mine. Then we have the button padding. So this option would affect the space all around the button content. As I keep increasing, the button keeps growing. But I don't want to have the same padding on all sides. So I'm going to click here to delink the fields and set different values for different sides. Those are 17 pixels at the top, 35 on the right, and 17 at the bottom, and 35 on the left. Alright, that's all for our first section. Now in the icon style we have the icon size option, where you can change the size of your icon. To set the size you want, you can use this slider or type in a value here. Since I'm happy with the icon's default size, I'll clear this to restore that value. Then we have another set of switches for normal and on hover display. Within normal we have the icon color, so you can easily change the icon color so it differs from the text. And if you want, you can also change the icon background color like this. In the hover settings we have the icon background hover color, so any color you set here will be visible only on hover. And below that we have the move icon option. So this is like a tiny animation effect that makes the icon move when we hover over the button. By default it's set to horizontal short, which looks like this. You can change it to horizontal, then you get this look. Or vertical, then it looks like this. Or diagonals, you get this effect. And finally you can set it to none to keep the icon stationary on hover. As I don't have any other changes on hover, I'll keep the animation but set it to vertical. There. Following that, we have the icon margin option. You can increase the values to create more space all around your icon. But I don't want the same values on all sides, so I'll delink the fields and set only 2 pixels at the top. So the icon lines up with the button text. Ok. Then we have the icon side border color, which lets us change this vertical line here. So you can change its color using the slider or with a hex code. I'll add a hex code to make it match the text and icon color. And then you can pick a new color for the icon side border hover color. And if you decide to set the color here, it will be visible only on hover. So when we hover over the button, this vertical line changes its color. I'll reset this. Ok, underneath this we have the icon side border height. And you can see how the line height changes with the changed values. I'll leave mine set to 40. And alongside the height we also have the icon side border width. So we can make the line narrower or thicker. I'll just set one pixel for mine. And with that we can move on to the button inner border style section. And this is empty now because I'm using the icon box button type. If I had used the one with inner border instead, I would be able to access the options here. And the same goes for the button underline style settings. If you enable the button text underline, you'd have options here to stylize it. But don't worry, I'll be showing you both sets of options using my two other button examples. So let's get cracking. 
I'm going to find and add another button widget to the middle column on the page. Here we are. Now for my new button, I'll choose a different layout. So this one will be outlined. Then the type will be with inner border. I'll be quick with these initial settings since we already examined the options and there is no need to cover them in depth again. I simply want to use these alternative examples to show you the different things you can do by using a different combination of settings. And also so we can cover the options we didn't get to see with our first button type. Ok, I'll save the underline for my third example. I'll change the text again so it says view more on both my buttons. And I'll set a hashtag as a link placeholder so the button becomes clickable. And the icon? Actually I'll skip the icon with this one. So we can proceed to the style tab. And in here I want to change the text color. The six zeros are for plain black. And I want the button outline to be black as well, so I'll use the border color to set the right hex code for that. Then in the hover settings, since as we can see the button has a slightly different tint on hover, and I want to change that, I'll use the background hover color option to make the background pure white so there's no visible change on hover. Ok, then I'll make the border thinner by setting one pixel here in border width. Now when we look, it's clear that this option only addresses the button's outline, its outer border. For the inner one we have a different section in the options, but we'll get to that in a moment. While we're here, we can see the button has slightly rounded corners. So I want to set 0 in the border radius field to get the pointy corners back. Ok, and I'll change the padding, the length of fields, and I'll set 16 pixels at the top, 46 on the right, 16 at the bottom and 46 on the left. Ok, I need to remove this zero, it's going to bother me. There. I'm skipping the icon style section as one, we already covered it, and two, this button example doesn't have an icon. So the more relevant settings for us are in the inner border style, and those involve the inner border color. That's this here. And I want to make it plain black to match the outer border. So six zeros. There. Now we also have some hover settings for this. With them we can set a different border color on hover. So your button can look something like this. Additionally, we can give the inner border an animation effect on hover. There are several options you can choose from, let's see a few. For example, remove to center looks like this. And move to outer edge does this. But the one I'll use is remove to two points, which looks like this. Ok, then the inner border offset option allows us to basically draw the inner border further inwards. I'll stick with the default setting for this. And the last option in this section is the one that I briefly referenced earlier, the inner border width. While we set the outer border width in the style section, this is where we can set the inner border width, like so. I'll set one pixel for this as well to keep the borders looking balanced. And with that, my second button example is done. Let me update the page to save my work before we start in on the third example. The buttons so far, both 1 and 2, represent different types you can choose. And the final button, let me just add it, search, there it is. I'll drag it over, ok. This one will show yet another possible button type setting, the text tool to be precise. And with this one, I'll enable the button text underline. That way we'll be able to examine the underlying style options later on. Ok, I'll change the text to keep my buttons cohesive and again set a placeholder for the link. Then I'll add an icon to this button, just a sec, this one, insert media. After that I can start styling the new button. The typography options here are the same ones we saw with our first button so I won't go into them again, but if you want to get creative with your version of a textual button, they can prove quite useful. For myself, the thing I want to do is change the button text color and make it plain black. And I think that I'm done with this section. Let me just see in the hover settings. No, there's nothing I want here right now. So I can open the icon style settings. And in here I'll set my icon to be 6 pixels. If you like, you can change the icon's color so it differs from the text. But I want to keep mine matched to the text, so I'll skip this. For the icon on hover, I have the horizontal short animation. 
I think it looks good like this, I'll leave it be. But I do want to adjust the margin a bit. I'll delink the fields for that and set 2 pixels at the top and 10 on the left. Okay. With that done, we can finally look at the last section with options, the one we didn't use with the previous two buttons, underline style. So for starters, we have the normal and hover switches again. Under normal, there's the underline color. We can easily change the color of the line drawn under the text. I'm going to set a dark gray shade here. Underneath that, we have the underline width. It lets us adjust how wide, or how long if you want to think of it that way, the underline will be. And if you adjust the width so the line doesn't cover the whole length of the text, then you can use this option, underline alignment. And now you can change the alignment from left to right, or set it to the center. I'll leave mine on the left and just put the width back the way it was. Okay. Then we have the hover settings. Since the underline disappears on hover, to show you a color change, I first need to set an underline hover width. And now when I hover, the new width is shown. So with that, I can pick a color, and then we can see it when we hover. Alright, I'll put this back. And we have one more option in the hover settings, and that's the enable hover underline draw. It's set to no by default, but if we switch that to yes, then we get this effect. Actually, I need to change the width so we can see it properly. There. So you can stick with this animation effect, or switch the option back to no to keep using the original one. And that's it for the normal and hover settings. Other than them, this section has options like the underline offset. It essentially lets us move the underline closer to or further away from the button text. We can see the line is closer to the text now. I'll set 3 pixels as the value. The higher the number, the closer the underline will be to the text. After that, we have the underline thickness. It's very straightforward. We can use it to make the line thicker. I'll leave mine set to default. And that's all for the options we have. The last options tab advanced has several useful settings for positioning, responsiveness, entrance animations and more, but since it's available for all Elementor widgets and not unique to our button widget, we won't be covering it in this tutorial. So I'll just save my work now. And here are my three buttons, all representing different types you get to use with the button widget from the key add-ons for Elementor. Additionally, we saw how you can combine different options to create these disparate looks. Now, if we look back at the widgets page, after covering all the options that the widget has in the back end, you should know how to make any and all of these examples here. Whether you choose to mirror what you see on this page or to create something new and unique, well, that's entirely up to you. You just need to decide which of the possibilities offered by the button widget work best with the style and design of your site. So, I hope going through this together has helped you to see how easy making elements can be with the key add-ons for Elementor plugin and its button widget. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching!